Okay, so now we're going to be um, working some practice problems off the calorimetry. So let's just do number two. Two is a perfectly lovely number, so we'll do that one. So calorimetry. How much energy is needed to change the temperature of 50 grams of water by 15 degrees Celsius? So the first thing we have to ask ourselves is what, which one of our formulas do we use for this? Which one of our formulas do we use for this? Let me drink some water while we go. You have two choices. You have the MCAT and you have the heat of heat of something. Yep, this one's going to be an MCAT. This one's going to be an MCAT. So let's start with that. So heat energy, which is Q, is equal to M C delta T. And number two, ask me how many grams of water can be heated from 20 degrees Celsius to 75 degrees Celsius using 12,500 joules. So the one we want to find is our mass. And because we're better at math this year than we were last year, we all hope, and better at physics for sure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve it for mass to start with. So I'll have to divide by C and delta T. Divide by C and delta T. So mass equals Q over C delta T. So what is our Q value? What is our heat energy in the problem? Which number? The 12,500 and that's in joules and now we need the specific heat of water so we're going to come over here to our lovely Google and go specific heat of water in joules. Joules per kilogram Kelvin. 4.184 joules per kilogram Kelvin. So here we go. So C is 4.184 joules over kilograms and Kelvins. And then we have 20 degrees Celsius to 75 degrees Celsius. So do I have to change those numbers to Kelvin or not? I don't have to change these to Kelvin because if it's a 55 degree change in Celsius, it's a 55 Kelvin change. So I don't have to actually find that this is 390, uh, 293 or 273, 258, no, 248. So I don't have to do that. I can just recognize that changing Kelvin and changing um, Celsius are the same thing. So now here's my mass. Now, to help you check units, because I know unit conversions has been like the most obnoxious thing. It's not so much learning the, the ideas it's the unit changes are terrible in fluids and in thermo because of the, all the different ways we can measure stuff. So how do we do this? Well, the number part, pretty straightforward. Pull out a calculator. <clears throat> and I do, let's see, I do 12,500 divided by 4.184 and 55 in parentheses. So I got 
And now what unit do I have? Well, these two are on in the denominator of the denominator. If they're in the denominator of the denominator, they stop being here and they start going there because you multiply by the reciprocal. So what I really have, and I'll show that, is I have 12,500 joules over one divided by whatever this, this goober down here is. divided by 230.12 joule kelvins over kilogram kelvins. So we got top number divided by the bottom number. So as you know, that means we flip the second fraction. We have kilogram kelvins on top, joule kelvins on bottom, and one over 230.12. So joules, joules, Kelvin, Kelvin, leaves us with kilograms. Or you can go, hey, I trusted that all these units might make sense. And so the unit I had for mass was kilograms. So the unit I have for mass is kilograms. Because they do if you use the right specific heat. Yeah. So now, what do we do? We have to do the kilograms back to grams. Is that, or do we have to look up the right? Say that one more time for me. Mm -hmm. You could use the gram one as long as you've got grams and the other two numbers you need like joules and you can even do it with celsius because sometimes you can look it up and find it with grams and celsius okay so yeah um it doesn't matter but yes because i chose this specific heat i now have to change my answer from kilograms to grams which means i multiply it by a thousand so that is 54.3 times a thousand is 54,300 joules, or grams, sorry. So just to, just to show what um, Eli was telling us, if I take all this out, let's take all this out. And let's say that you wanted it in grams. You know you want your answer in grams. So you look up. I'll come back over there. You go to your cute little Google machine and you go, okay. If I had said right here, specific heat in joules per gram Celsius. Okay, here it is in joules per gram Celsius. So then my math would look like this. You go down. So I would have M equals 12,500 joules, 4,180 joules per gram Celsius. And then I could leave this as 55 degrees Celsius. And of course, you get the same answer, except you get the, it's already in grams. Celsius, Celsius, joules, joules, left with grams. So yes, it's easier if you use the one with what you already have. But I don't know which one they're going to give you on a quiz or a test like that, so you have to be ready to kind of adjust if needed. We okay with that kind of question? So anytime you're using a change in temperature, changes in temperature, you're going to be using this formula. All right, so let's do a different one. 
a different variation on that. Let's look at, um, I got the answers down here. Let's look at number five and see what number five is asking us to do. And I'm going to get a set up, but then I'm going to let you solve it. Okay? So number five, a piece of metal weighing 59.047 grams was heated to 100 degrees Celsius and put into 100 milliliters of water at 23.7 degrees Celsius. The metal and the water were allowed to come to equilibrium, determined to be 27.8 degrees Celsius. Assuming no heat is lost to the environment, calculate the specific heat of the metal. Okay, so we got a lot of stuff going on in this problem. So are we changing state or are we changing temperature? The metal is changing temperature and the water is changing temperature, right? So the way we want to set this up is they tell me no heat is lost to the environment. So Q lost plus Q gained has to be zero. Which one is losing temperature? Which one is cooling off? So the metal loses Q and the water gains Q. So whatever the metal loses, the water has to gain. Okay. So how are we going to set this up? Well, these are temperatures. So for this one, I'm going to use M, C, Delta T for the metal. And I'm going to add that to M, C, Delta T for the water. And I know that better add up to zero. Somebody's going to be negative because they're losing and somebody's going to be positive because they're gaining. So now what numbers go where? What goes with the, the metal piece? And I'll wait because I know you're writing. Oh yeah, sorry, I didn't know that. Let me. Can you, let's do this. Let's just do this. And um, before we write, we can get what goes with which thing. Is that better? So this is your first homework assignment for the next quarter. But since we did it yesterday, let's go ahead and put some work in it a little bit to get some practice. Okay, so what do we know about our metal? 59.047 grams, so we know the mass. We know its temperature to start with. And they tell us that we also know the temperature at the end. Okay, so grams, temperature, temperature, we're good to go. Here's how this is going to go. So this is 59 point, I'm going to have to look that up, this one, will I quit fighting my computer? Here's one of those days. Okay. So we have
59.047 grams. We're looking for the specific heat of the metal. And we know the temperature started at 100 and finished at 27.8. 27.8 minus 100. Final temperature minus original temperature. And to that, we are going to add the water. But as soon as I look at the water, I see that it tells me it's 100 milliliters. Ugh, that was hateful right? I have grams, but the second one you put me in milliliters. So, so what is how many grams is one milliliter? That's in gallons. Hey, look. One milliliter is equal to one gram. Yay! One of the few times that unit conversion works out. So grams and milliliters are the same thing. Forever. Isn't that awesome though? Okay, so what do we do with the water? We have 100 milliliters, so that really means we have 100 grams of water is 100 milliliters. We know the specific heat of water. We're in Celsius and we're in grams. So I want to use the 4180 because that is joules per gram degree Celsius. I'm going to make this bigger. And then our last piece on the far right is going to be what? The water started at, what in the world? The water started at 23.7 and went to 23 or 27.8. So here, so we would have 27.8 was the ending temperature, 23.7 was the starting temperature. 29.047 C 7.8. That's 100 equals, actually, let me make that bigger for you. I want to make it big enough you can see, but not so big that it runs off the page. Plus 100. 27.8 minus 23.7 equals zero. So the only thing we don't know is C for the water. There we go. So I'm going to leave that on the algebra. So how is this problem the same as the last one? You're still using MCAT because you're changing the temperature. But now you have to do two items changing instead of just one. And one of them you can see what's going to happen on the first set. You have a positive number, you have C, but what happens to your temperature change? It's going to get negative because you have a higher temperature at the beginning than you had at the end. 
So that whole term will become a negative number. So that's a heat loss. The right-hand side will end up being all positive numbers. So that would be a heat gain. So the water gains and the metal loses. Okay? So we'll do some of those. And we'll do some more practice when we go back from fall break. Because, yeah, you'll be doing it today or you'll do it tomorrow. And then you'll be like, I have no idea what's happening when I come back. Okay? So for viewers at home, you get to finish this one on your own. But I will tell you that the answer is, so that you can check yourself, you should get for the answer on number five, the C of the metal is 0 0.402 joules per gram Celsius. 0 0.402. So in chemistry, the other thing we would say about this is what? Would that be exothermic or endothermic? When you take in energy, the water's reaction would be endothermic because it took in heat energy. The metals would be exothermic because it pushed heat energy out. So you may hear those terms as well. Stop us right there. So for the rest of the class, I'm going to leave the uh, meeting on, but I'm going to stop.